Okay, so now we're uh, ready to start with our shading. Make sure that's focused. So here's what you guys are going to need. Okay, you're going to need your scrap piece of paper um, that we used for the shading worksheet. If you've lost it, uh, you can get another one from the drawer over there that says paper next to the big counter. Okay. Uh, you're going to need all three pencils. You're going to need to, uh, your 4H. Okay, so again, It'll say 4H here on the end of the pencil. You're going to need uh, your 3B, which again, kind of hard to see. 3B pencil, it'll say right here on the end. And then uh, 6B pencil, which it'll say 6B right here on the end. Um, I would hold these pencils, again, in your hand in order of lightness or darkness, whichever way you want to say it. So I'm going to have my 4H first my 3B in my hand second, and then I'm going to have my 6B in my hand last. That way you have access to what you need, um, and you're not uh, picking up your pencils off your table and trying to read the labels every five seconds. It might save yourself some time. And then you want to have, you know, your scrap piece of paper and an eraser handy. Now, for a lot of this demonstration, I'm going to have to have my tool up on my easel so I can see how it looks. But I'm going to talk to you just a little bit about, you know, just some prepping that we need to do and then just how you kind of see and read the, the shadows and the values. So the first thing you want to do, this is going to sound counterproductive, but it's going to be very helpful. This is going to be extremely helpful for me. Is you want to take your pink eraser and you basically want to go over top of your drawing and just lighten it. So I'm just gently rubbing the top surface of this. I don't want to necessarily get rid of my drawing. I just want to lighten it because here's the thing. If we leave these outlines that we have created here for our drawing, if we leave those on our paper, the problem is, is that it's going to forever look outlined. And when you outline something, it's going to make it look flat. And if we want to make these look real, we have to get rid of these outlines. Okay? So I'm just going to lighten this up, and I'm just going to, I just did half of it so you could see the difference. So this is okay. This is too dark. And then I'm just going to continue to go through this. And again, I can still see my drawing. It's just not as dark. Now for me, if you guys remember, as I've been working on these demonstrations, um, I purposely drew my lines really dark just so that they would show up on the video screen, but you will find how that's a bad thing just by watching my demo. It would be much harder for me to get rid of these than it will be for you. I'm going to just continue. I'm not even going to go over my Pittsburgh here. Just a little bit. My Pittsburgh is going to stay pretty dark, so I don't need to worry about that too much. So I just got my uh, pink eraser just on its side, and I'm just gently rubbing over top of the drawing here. Now you got a lot of this kind of eraser stuff all over it. So you can just take your um, paper off your table and just kind of shake it off, off to the side, so you don't have all those little eraser bits. Okay, so that's what a prep drawing looks like. So, you know, I'll even put this wrench up here so you can see in comparison just how dark it was and now how light this is, okay? I'll eventually do that with the wrench. All right, so, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write this on my paper. You do not need to write, do not write this on your paper, but I want you to just be able to see it every time that I have this on here, okay? Uh, for, every val for every form change, okay, there's going to be a value change. I'm going to say that again. For every form change, there's going to be a value change. So that means every time the form of the object that it, I'm drawing changes, there's going to be change that's happening with the value. And then remember, the value is the lightness or darkness of the color that we're looking at, okay? So when this tool goes from the top, and it goes to the side, that's a form change. So this is the top and that's the side. 
Because that's a change in form, again, there's going to be two different values there. This is how we're going to also to see the edge without having to rely on an outline. If you guys look here on this part of my tool, now again, I've got a bright light shining on it right now. But if you look, it's really light and bright here, and it's really dark on this like side part. Okay, That's how that edge will pop out. I don't need an outline. You should never need an outline if you're doing a good job with the shading. Okay. So just know that every time the form changes, so even when it comes to my bolt, this is slightly round. Again, as that form changes and goes from the top to the side, there's going to be an equal value change that happens to it. Same thing with the handles. This is the very top middle part of my handle. As it curves to the side, that, val that form is changing and so will the value because the light is hitting that form different. Okay, so I'm going to write on here, and, I, and again, don't write this on your paper. I'm just putting this on here so that you guys can see this every single time you look at my demo. So form change equals value change. Okay, hopefully I won't have to change my drawing right there. All right, form change equals value change. That is the trick to all of this, okay? Now, where to start? Now, if you guys remember when we uh, did the value scale, we started with the lighter pencil first. I'm actually going to do something a little different here, and I'm going to start with my 3B. The reason why I'm going to start with my 3B is because it's one, my middle pencil, my middle gray pencil. I can make this look light, and I can make it look pretty dark, so I like working with the 3B first. If I were you, I would start in an easy place, which I think is the handles. So we're going to do the handles first. So when you're looking at your tool, and you've got to make sure it's up on your easel, you've got to take consideration where your light is coming from. My light is coming from a couple different directions, but the lightest part of it is actually going to be right here on the very top for me. Now, you might find that the lightest part of yours is over here on the left side. Maybe it's the right side. So your lightest area may not be the same as mine, and it probably won't be. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start. I'm going to basically leave. My lightest value is already on my entire drawing. It's white. So anything I want to leave white, I'm leaving alone. So I'm just going to start here at the bottom because I know that my um, uh, middle here needs to be lightest. I'm just going to ignore it work around it. And I forgot something here. I need to give myself a nice edge to shade with. So use that scrap piece of paper. Sand down that graphite so you got a nice edge to shade with. And then I'm going to start. Now the trick here is, is not to ignore little details. Now a lot of kids want to just go in and fill this in like a coloring book. Take your time. This should not go fast. So as you can see right now what I'm doing is I'm just spending basically time on just this lower part of my handle. And you can see already I'm starting to lose. I'm going to drop this down so you can see this a little bit better. I'm starting to lose my outline. And that's a good sign. I'm going to go ahead and press down where it needs to be darker because I can see already some darker shades. So I'm, I'm, I'm not just filling in or trying to match the value. I'm also too looking at the shape that these values or shadows that are what they're creating. So I'm spending time thinking about that too. Once I kind of get one part started, and again, I'm looking at every little detail. This light is kind of blinding here. I'm going to see what this looks like without the light. It's a little hard to see. Probably the best it's going to get. 
So I'm just going to kind of build this up. And again, I'm just working with my 3B pencil right now because I find I can do a lot of different values with this. I'm looking again at the shapes that these values are creating, how they curve, their size, where they're at. I'm looking at everything. Now I am going to need to go in with my 4-H um, pencil here soon because I've got some lighter grays that I just am not going to be able to get in with my 3B pencil. And this is going to look kind of like what I would describe as a hot mess for a little bit, and that is normal. I am using very little pressure with my pencil. So even in the dark areas, what I'm doing is I'm just kind of lightly going over and I'm just building up the layers. I find that if I take my time and um, put down thin layers rather than just like one thick layer all at one time. Um, I can control how it looks and I can blend it out a lot easier. So I'm just going to spend my time focusing just on this one handle for, some, for a bit. You can just see again, hopefully you can see just how much um, kind of focusing and just paying attention to what I'm doing. You don't want to generalize what it is that you're looking at. You don't want to assume that you're just going to fill it in one way or another. Really look at what it is that you're shading. Keep your eye on that object. And again, look at the shapes that you see that shadow creating. <laughs> so just continue to go through, refine and define. I'm going to go in with my 4-H because I need it. Just not going to get those light values on without it. So again, before you start with a new pencil, always make sure you give yourself that edge to shade with. Plugging in my lighter values. I'm going to go ahead and take this 4-H and put it even where I have my 3-B. I do find that anytime I have issues with just kind of blending and bringing things together, I can use my 4-H pencil almost like a blending stick. Remember also to never, ever, ever, ever take your finger and start blending and smudging everything. You're going to lose a lot of detail when you do that. And it's just going to look like a big uh, smoke cloud. can see what that 4-H is doing. It's bringing everything kind of together here. Leaving my lightest areas white. I'm working around them. I can even also, too, go in with my 6B when I think that I'm ready. Again, you're going to notice in some situations the values bl uh, blend out, and in other situations they do not. So again, it's all about observing what it is that you're looking at. All right, so that's for the handle. 
that. People with wrenches. Okay, with the wrench. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to start kind of working. I'm going to just deal with this bottom part right here. Okay? I'm going to start shading just the bottom part. I'm not going to worry about kind of going too high or anything like that. I'm just going to do the bottom part. Now, again, remember, for every form change, there needs to be a value change. So I'm going to write on here. Again, do not write this on here on your paper. Form change. equals value change. Okay? So I'm going to deal with just this part down here. But first thing first, you want to erase everything, kind of erase it over and lighten your drawing if you haven't already done that. I'm also going to do it to erase over top of my um, Pittsburgh. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start down here at the bottom. I haven't erased all of this. I'll do that later when I get this started. I'm going to do the same thing. Start with my 6B. Now, when I'm doing this, again, you got to remember form change equals value change. So I'm going to look at Now, because this is a lot of metal, reflective shapes um, or reflective surfaces, you really got to focus on the shapes a lot that you see each value making. So it's going to look almost kind of like graphic designy. Does that make sense? So I'm going to kind of pick out a value, figure out what shape it's making, and I'm going to plug that in. And again, I'm just using my 3B pencil. I'm going to look at the shapes that it's making. This inner part right here for me is pretty dark, so I'm going to go ahead and kind of fill that in because that's going to help me see the other edges. If it's helpful, you know, find little areas that you can kind of just plug in. And see, that'll help me see the inside and the top edge better. So again, this is going to look really kind of um, choppy, a little blocked out for a little while, and that's fine. It'll all come together as I build it up. So I'm simply kind of looking at the shapes that each one of these values are doing. I'm kind of taking this approach like it's a paint-by-number piece. You guys have ever seen those little kits you can buy in the stores, paint by number? Um, that's basically how I'm approaching it. I'm approaching this as if, you know, each one of these values was sort of outlined and carved out for me, and all I'm doing is kind of plugging in the value that I see. So paint by number. So I'm just alternate, I'm alternating between all my pencils, just kind of asking myself, what is it that I need? If it's a dark value, I could maybe do that with my 3B pencil. If it's really dark, I'm definitely going to need to use my um, 6B. So I'm just going to kind of, again, continue this approach where it's just paint by number.
And anywhere that it needs to be white, I leave alone. So white stays the way it is. It's already done for me. I'm just working on the bottom part here. Now keep plugging that stuff in. As I go through, okay? And you'll start to see things pop out. You'll see those outlines disappear, hopefully. Okay, um, I'm gonna stop for now. We will continue on Monday.